Hello, David Clark here from DVC Training. Just going to do a short video now on what's new in EDS 10.33. Say so it's short because mainly there's just a lot of bug fixes, not too many new features. There's been two updates. So there was a 10.339356 which came out in September and they've just released a 9453 at the end of October on the 26th. Again, mainly bug fixes. So looking at this timeline here, one of the main things they've added into it is a little tick box, which you get in the user settings, application other, and this thing here, show separate render progress dialog. To me, that kind of says just pop up another window as opposed to having it in the job monitor. But no, it means a bit more than that. Tick it and then go to export something and choose whatever format you're using. Click on export. And immediately, instead of going to the job monitor, it pops up in a little window like this and it gets done straight away. And I now can't use EDIUS. It's basically bypassing the background rendering inside of EDIUS. So it works a bit like EDIUS 9 used to. Now I really like the background rendering. I can do stuff whilst it's actually rendering and whilst it's exporting files. I can just carry on working. It really saves me an awful lot of time. But sometimes you're doing a job and you say, no, I just want you to do this right now. If you actually have got quite a few different things going on, Maybe you've suddenly got a lot of things up here in the job monitor and they're all waiting to go. And no, you actually want to get something done right now. Well, then tick that little dialog box. And then when you start exporting something, it will do it straight away. Same as if you start rendering something. So like select that and choose render. It does that straight away and it holds up everything else. That is what that's for. Some people have had problems with the job monitor. They put things in there and they don't start. There's a thing where you have sequences inside of sequences. So let's take that and then pop in one sequence inside another. And EDIUS now writes a little waveform of that. And there seems to be a slight issue at the moment for some people that doesn't work. That is always a background job. That will never be done in the foreground. You see, it worked for me quite happily. If it's got a whole bunch of waveform caches waiting to be done inside of here, it's going to want to do those before it does your export. And you can't do that because they won't work. Your best option is actually to try and fix it rather than tick that little box. But if you're in a hurry, you can always just tick that little box and get things done there and then. It's also for people that prefer to say, right, now, I'm just going to render something right now. I want it done right now. I don't want to have to wait for whenever it gets around to doing it in the queue. That's the kind of main new feature that got put in in 10.33. If you are having problems with the job monitor, it's very likely the reason is something to do with not having the job monitor excluded from either your antivirus or from your firewall. Antiviruses can cause EDIUS problems, especially with this stuff where they're accessing a separate program outside of it. And ideally what you want to do is make sure that you have excluded EDIUS and a few other programs from the antivirus and from your firewall. There's instructions on how to do this on a sticky on the Grass Valley website. So in this thread called Tips from the Moderators, it does explain here how to exclude EDIUS and a few other bits of EDIUS programs from your firewall. That generally solves everything. But you might also have to do the same thing inside of your antivirus. So for example here, this is explaining how to do it in Norton. I've got a VAST on mine and I've got the free version of a VAST and I found I've had to go into that and actually add the exclusions in there in a place that's not mentioned on that thread. It will be different for each antivirus program. So for example here, I've had to go to File Shield, open the File Shield, go to Exceptions and add in two Grass Valley folders into that. I've also had to go into Ransom Protection here and adjust that, add in some permissions on that. That's actually solved most of my problems. And on Avast, it's got its own firewall and I've had to go into that and actually add in exceptions for the Grass Valley programs. So it's the same programs they mentioned on that thread. I've just had to make sure I added them into my antivirus which isn't explained there because there's lots of different antiviruses and they can't possibly cover all of them. That generally solves problems with the job monitor, but it's nice they've given you the option of completely bypassing it with this little tick box. I can never remember where the thing is as well. Every time I open up a new system, I've got to try and remind myself. It's under user settings, application, other, and right down there. Most of the other new things in 10.33 were to do with better format support for things like ProRes RAW and the latest Blackmagic RAW and little things to do with extra formats. There's some updates for people who use Arja cards inside of EDIUS. And then there are a lot of bug fixes. So one of the ones that's in the very latest 10.33 is to do with going from EDIUS to find a file inside of Windows Explorer. 
So you probably know that if you go to the bin and you want to find that particular file on your computer, all you've got to do is right click on it and say Explorer. Edius has been doing that for donkey's years. So you're supposed to do that, it opens up a window, it highlights the file. What I found happening with me recently is I've done that and then what happened is it's opened an Explorer box but it still stays behind Edius, so you can't see it. And I have to pop down to the window here and click on my Explorer icon and find the folder, which has just been slightly irritating. Now I didn't think that was an Edius problem because I had exactly the same problem with Resolve, which has got its own variation of that. You know, you find it in Explorer, it would do it, but not bring the window to the front. In the October release of 10.33, they've put in something which should make it come to the front all the time. And certainly it has for me so far. I'm doing this video a day after it's been released. But yeah, right click, Explorer, it pops up in front of everything, which is exactly what you want it to do. Another thing I'm going to mention is a change which I've only really just noticed, and I don't think it's in 10.33, but I can't remember when it came in. And that's to do with replacing clips on the timeline. So looking at this timeline here, you know, I've got a few clips, just random clips here of Edinburgh. I've got this clip here, which is in a picture in picture with a border, and it's got a primary color corrector on it. Suppose I want to change that for another clip. So let's take this clip. I want to put this one as a picture in picture for some bizarre reason. In Edius, for many, many years, you've been able to hold down with the right mouse button in the source window here and drag it down onto the timeline over the clip that you want to replace and then let go and it would give you a box to replace the clip or replace something about the clip. Now it's been changed so it says paste. So it's doing exactly the same thing, but it used to say replace, now it says paste. So here, right click, Paste, I want to change the clip. So if I say change the clip, it puts in the new clip, but keeps all the effects that were on it. So it's got the same primary color corrector and the same layout are on it. And literally the only change there is the fact they've changed the name. So, you know, I want to replace that clip, right click, paste, I can replace that clip on the timeline. And if you're looking for a keyboard shortcut to replace clips, you've now got to look for a keyboard shortcut that says paste clips. The way it works hasn't changed, all that's happened is the name has changed. The other thing that we were expecting in 10.33 was what's called a native OFX bridge. So in Edius for the last few versions, we've had this thing, an OFX bridge. This is basically a way of letting you use other people's plugins inside of Edius. In itself, it doesn't do anything. It's just a bridge to let you use other plugins like things like Boris Continuum. You could use that inside of Edius through this bridge. This bridge was written by New Blue for Edius. And it's okay, but it's also slightly irritating. And I also have the feeling sometimes that when you put lots of New Blue stuff inside of Edius, it slows the whole program down a bit. So I tend not to put it on there. Grass Valley announced at IBC that they were doing their own bridge. So you wouldn't have to use this anymore. You'd actually have their own bridge. Now I don't know how it's going to work because it hasn't got here yet because it didn't make it into this version of 10.33, but it should be in the next one. But I'm only mentioning it here in case you've heard about it. You said, where is it? But you don't even know what it is. To be honest, on its own, it doesn't do anything. So if you don't have any OFX effects, it's pretty much no use to you. But it'd be nice to have a native one and it might mean more people will develop plugins for Edius that work a bit better. Like, will we get a neat video that we can use through OFX in 10-bit as opposed to the current one that's 8-bit? Will we be able to use Boris better? Will we be able to use Sapphire and things like that a lot better than we do now? Don't know, because we haven't got it. But if you heard about it, didn't come out with 10.33, we'll be getting that quite soon. Don't know exactly when quite soon. Like I said at the start, this is a short video because this is mainly bug fixes. The main thing is that little tick box. So I thought I'd do a quick video about it just to tell you what it is. If you want to get the update, Edius Pro will be prompting you to download it. If not, you can come up to the help menu here and you can go help and check for updates. I'm in Edius Workgroup on this particular computer, so it doesn't prompt me for updates, but do that. It'll find it and then it'll prompt you to download it and install it. Failing that, you can get it from edius.net, which is where I tend to get most of my Edius downloads nowadays because it's very easy to find and you can just click the button and download it. But you can always just pop in here and get it from them as well. Their installer does include all the latest versions of plugins for Edius and a little program that will run and update anything that you need updating, like the different plugins, maybe like the Blackmagic drivers, whatever. 
You can always find out more about Edius and my tutorial from www.dvctraining.co.uk. I'll be releasing some more videos shortly. I'm working on a series about using DaVinci Resolve, but I'm also going to be doing some more about Edius because I've had been doing a lot of editing in Edius recently. And I was thinking some of the stuff that I've done actually people might find extremely useful. So these obviously won't be videos about new features. They'll be about how to use the existing features and work a bit faster. That'll all be coming out in the next couple of months. So don't forget to subscribe to this channel. Hope you found this video useful and I'll see you next time.